Hello you, it's me. Today I'm going to talk to you about Summerland by the Finnish author Hanu Rajaniemi. This book is set in an alternate 1930s, 1920s, where in the years surrounding the First World War, the human race developed a means of communicating with the newly dead and created a line of weaponry and technology called Ectotech, through which the war was won. The British Empire has started to extend its tendrils into the afterlife, and while people still don't know really where your souls go when you die, they've discovered a place where souls can hang on for an extended period. A city built between here and hereafter called Summerland. People earn tickets to Summerland while alive, uh, where they go after they die until their souls begin to fade, as everybody's naturally does, and pass on to an unknown place. And many in Summerland continue to do the work they did while they were alive, trafficking for various government agencies in information, espionage, communicating with the living world, or, as it's called in this book, the Winter Court, either by ringing an ectophone, hiring a spirit medium to channel them, or possessing what is essentially a ventriloquist dummy called an Edison doll. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Iron Curtain, the Russians allow their dead to undergo something called the Termin Procedure, in which they fuse their souls with the dead soul of Lenin, uh, who is now called the Presence and consists of thousands of Russian dead and is becoming something dangerously close to a god. The plot revolves around a British government agent called Rachel White, who discovers evidence of a Russian plant within the British government, but one that is already dead and works from Summerland. And it also revolves around the double agent, uh, who really is fighting for something that he believes is a just cause. And as the plot unfurls, both of these characters discover that their governments, respectively, are doing quite questionable things, and that Summerland may not be everything people thought it was. Things I liked, things I didn't like, I'll do this next bit without spoilers as much as I can. But this book doesn't really have big twists in it, so there's not a lot for me to really give away. This had similar vibes to me as something that's steampunk or diesel punk, but didn't really fit into any genre uh, like anything I've read before. So I feel like it needs its own little label, like 1930s Bakelite punk or ectopunk or something like that. And one thing I can really commend this book for is for the world build being so integral to the plot. So often when you get spy thrillers or crime thrillers within the fantasy or sci-fi genres, you could very easily remove the world build as a, as a backdrop and the story would be completely unchanged. They're stories that could really fit into any setting. But so much of what this story is, the plot of the story, the characters, the threats are so tied into the premise that the story and the world build are really inseparable, which is rare to see, but very good. But wow, I tell you what, this story really throws you in at the deep end and assumes you know everything about the world. It name drops X and Y, and you really have to piece things together as the story goes on. So for people who like to be spoon-fed all the information right at the beginning, you might find this a bit exhausting to read. But it was realistic. Stepping into a world you don't know, having to figure things out um, through context, through eavesdropping, people's conversations they have casually, as opposed to writer's convenience, which I get sick of very quick. Being from the point of view of one person either side of a spy conflict, one thing this book does well is it doesn't paint a clear bad guy. There really isn't a clear person in the right, and you can really sympathise with why each of the main characters are doing what they're doing, and why the country's governments are progressing in the way they're progressing. It also, through each side, paints the other side as somewhat backwards and alien, which was interesting to read. It captures the struggles of a woman working in government, encountering boys' club problems that still exist today very much, and the issues she encounters as she tries to claw her way up a ladder and achieve what men achieve with 10% of the effort through social collect connections and drinking buddies. I like that it paints war and greed and people as the problems with the community, and that a new society that would arise through Ectotech would have all the problems replaced with a completely new set of problems. The horrors of a war with ghosts and spirit weaponry and the PTSD and the soldiers that would arise from something like that was legitimately spine-chilling to read, and I wish it was explored more. And while there's all this new technology shaping the world in interesting ways, the book sort of posits the idea that 
what would change the world most in this situation is people. What if people's inventiveness, their inspiration, their contribution to society didn't end the moment they died? An example is a second tower, another project of Gustav Eiffel, the continued inventions of Edison and Tesla. But what if people's authority didn't end when they died either? I think that's a pretty scary thought. That people's reigns wouldn't ever naturally end. That change in regime could only come about through acquiescence or overthrow. The one thing I really can fault this book on is that it felt cut short. The build-up was good, the premise was fantastic, nothing I've ever read before. The characters were great, I loved both the main characters and the side characters. And it felt like a really sudden at the end, to a, like, closed-off climax. I wish this book was longer. The threat unveiled right at the end, the threats unveiled right at the end, were not really explored. Um, this is a standalone. I looked it up, I wished it wasn't a standalone, because this felt like book one in a really good series, which is a real shame. So I'm going to give this one three stars, but I'm also going to highly recommend it based on the world build and the originality of this book. So I know that's quite a short one, just a few things to say about that. I did like it. Read it. It's great. Just wasn't... Oh, oh. I just wish there was more. So thanks very much for watching this little review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's more coming all the time. At the moment, I think I'm reading Dead Beats. The next Dresden Files book should be up before the end of the week. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, where I'll sort of comment on stuff as I'm reading it. I'm trying to get into Goodreads, but that's a slow process because I keep forgetting that I have one. So that's it from me. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you soon.